Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar, How to Make Virtual Career Events Work in Your Tech Hiring Strategy. Before we get started, I have just a few quick items to cover. Um, if you have questions for our speakers today, please submit them using the control panel. We'll do our best to answer them, but if we don't get to any of your specific questions, we will be answering them over the blog um, later this week, so be on the lookout for that. Next, um, today's webinar will be on demand, and we will send a recording of it later this week, along with a post-webinar survey, so we'd love to hear your feedback. And lastly, as an attendee today for our webinar, you will be entered to win a complimentary public um, event, and so we will announce that later this week as well, so be on the lookout. So today we will introduce our speakers, provide an overview of virtual career events, and then we'll review the five lessons that we've learned over the last year in hosting these events and how you can make them a part of your own recruiting strategy. We'll leave plenty of time at the end for Q&A, so again, please get your questions in so we can answer them. So let's start by introducing our speakers. Um, we're really excited today to be joined by Lindsay Davis and Kristen Demke from Optum. Um, they will talk about how they've um, been doing career events over the last year and lessons that, that they have learned and best practices. Um, so they have some really great things to share and we're really excited to hear from them. Um, and I'll start by just letting everybody kind of introduce themselves. So Lindsay, will you kick us off? Yeah, of course. Thanks, Melissa. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Lindsay Davis. I am a national event planner with Optum. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with who Optum is, we are a part of United Health Group Family of Businesses, and we're the health services arm of the company. And we're working to transform, transform healthcare, and we do that through technology and data and clinical expertise, and really striving just to make the healthcare system work better for everyone. I've been with the company for almost three years now, and I'm part of an events team that supports events across Optum, including technology and clinical events as well. And over the past year, I've supported almost 40 events, almost all of them being virtual. So I've had the opportunity to learn all sorts of new platforms, um, refine how we participate in events and support our businesses and the talent acquisition team. So thank you for having me today. I'm excited to share all those things we've learned over the last year with you. And I'll go ahead and kick it over to Kristen Dempke, my colleague from Optum as well. Thanks, Lindsay. Hi, everyone. Excited to be here. I'm Kristen Dimke. I lead one of our sourcing teams here at Optum. I've been with Optum for a little over a year, um, but I've spent over 15 years in talent acquisition and a couple of different industries. And this has been quite the year and leveraging virtual events as part of our overarching talent attraction strategy has been pretty critical. So excited to share what we've learned and what we've encountered um, along with everyone else today. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is John Hassett. I'm the VP of Sales for our global career events business here at DICE. Uh, I've been in the recruiting industry for a little bit over 25 years in recruitment and HR tech and been with DHI Group for the last year and a half. So we look forward to talking to you today. Great. Thank you all. And my name is Melissa Carey. I'm a Senior Product Marketing Manager for DICE, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. So before we dive into the content, uh, we thought we'd start with just a quick poll to kind of get to know our audience a little bit better today. And so the question is, have you ever participated in a virtual, virtual career event? And we'll give everyone just a few seconds to answer. So we're rolling in, thank you for participating. All right, so thank you all again for participating. It looks like 61% um, of you have participated in a virtual career event before, while about almost 40% of you have not. Um, so for those of you that have not, we hope that this webinar today will give you just a good overview of what they are, but also just the great benefits that they have to offer. Um, so now I'm going to turn it over to John to walk us through what is a virtual career event. Right, thanks, Melissa. So before we get into our lessons learned, let's talk about what a virtual career event really is. Uh, having been to hundreds of job fairs over the years in my recruiting experience, 
I had a hard time getting my head around what a virtual career event entailed. At one point in my career, I was running a staffing office in Piscataway, New Jersey, and I would go to job fairs at Rutgers and other schools in the area all the time. It was a great source of hire, but to be quite honest, I dreaded the experience. From being out of the office all day, to finding parking, to lugging and setting up the booth, taking down the booth, et cetera. Um, and I think for most of you on the call who've ever done an on-site job fair, you, you get the picture. It wasn't until I actually got a chance to participate in a virtual career event and see the results that it all of a sudden made sense to me. You could think of a virtual career event as an online version of your traditional job fair hosted through a web-based platform. There are many platforms out there to choose from. We've had a strong partnership with Brazen over the years, and the experience with the candidates is fully interactive. Based on client and candidate feedback, we believe the experience is actually better when done virtually. If you're like me and have a hard time grasping the concept, I suggest you reach out to us or any of the platforms that are out there to get a demo of what the experience is really like. There are many other benefits we've seen by going virtual, which we'll discuss today. After more than a year of hosting over 100 virtual events all over the world, I can personally say that I'm in no rush to go back to the old way of doing job fairs, pandemic or not. So let's dig deeper into why you should consider a virtual career event. There's so many reasons why this is a great way to scale your recruiting efforts and drive efficiency for your teams. There's no physical limitations to virtual events. As a result, it'll enhance your ability to connect online with technologists who are both active and passive, reach a wider pool of candidates regardless of geo, help promote your brand awareness, and simplify your candidate pipelining overall. But from what I've heard from our clients, the biggest benefits and ROI can be measured in both actual dollars and efficiencies gained by not having to incur the cost of travel to bring a team of recruiters to cities all over the country to recruit top talent. I remember last year we had a Fortune 100 client that used to bring a team of recruiters to hire IT professionals with clearances from their offices in Seattle to Hawaii, DC, Florida, Huntsville, and other cities that are hotbeds for these roles, just to name a few. Now they use virtual career events through us and make the same hires at a fraction of the cost with the same results or better. Other soft benefits include the efficiency gained by not being away from the office and the ability to scale the size of your team participating in the events, sometimes to include hiring managers. The process of setting up your booths is very easy and just think you never need to find parking. As we all witnessed last year, working remote has become a part of doing business, and we feel that this trend will continue in some form or another in the years to come. In a recent sentiment report from DICE, 65% of technologists want to work remotely at least three days a week, and a growing number of technologists, 22%, want to work remotely two days a week. Based on surveys like this and studies on the future of recruiting industry, top tech candidates are not in any rush to get back to the office full time. And if you're looking to hire them, the chances are you will find them at an online event are far greater than at an in-person event. We've seen significant increase in utilization of virtual career events as a part of a hybrid recruiting strategy implemented by top companies around the world. And as a result, the virtual job fair market has grown to become a $168 billion industry within the talent acquisition space. So as we all adjust to this post-pandemic way of life, there are many things like working remote that we have found to appreciate at some level. The same can be said for the utilization of virtual career events. According to a recent LinkedIn study on the future of recruiting in 2021, taken by over 1,500 global talent professionals, they found that 81% of them agree that virtual recruiting will continue in the post-COVID era. Based on the feedback from our candidates, they would also agree, as you can see by some of the testimonials here on the right, that there are huge benefits to participating in a virtual career event, and it actually enhances the candidate experience. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive into the top five lessons we've learned over the past year in hosting virtual career events. We're excited to have our partners from Optum share real life examples on their perspectives and learnings as well. 
Virtual career events offer unique opportunities to highlight your employer brand, regardless of the size of your organization. Posting content and videos can help give a candidate insight into things that are not found on job postings and really highlight your company's employee value proposition. By connecting with candidates ahead of, during, and after an event, you have the ability to further strengthen your company as an employer of choice. Lastly, if your company is committed to DEI, make sure you're sharing that as part of your branding strategy. Although sometimes it's difficult to measure the impact of employment branding, it's an integral part of any successful recruitment strategy. In a recent study from DICE, we found that 80% of technologists agree a company's mission is an important factor when considering a new employer. At 82% would not apply for a role at a company that offered higher pay, but had a bad corporate reputation. A well thought out branding strategy ahead of, during and after virtual events will greatly enhance your success rates. Virtual events provide an opportunity to showcase your brand, values, and what it's like to work for an organization in an online setting. So Lindsay, we'd love to hear about how Optum is showcasing its brand through these events. Yeah, thanks, John. So if you look here, these are just some different ways we've taken advantage of our brand awareness plays and to show differentiated content. We can show more content and unique content and get our hands, get it in the hands of our candidates and really showcase our brand. So we're highlighting in ways we couldn't before and truly able to double down and share unique content uh, like we haven't been able to before. So here, as you can see, these are just some examples of some platforms we've utilized over the past year. And the top one there it really showcases our brand. It showcases our logo and our colors. And then we chose images that really reflect what the audiences we're, we're tapping into and reaching out to. And then below that is our, our day in the life videos. We like to use videos that showcase what it's like to work at Optum. And Kate here, she's one of our hiring or our technology leaders. And what's so great is that Kate actually can even participate in some of our virtual events because now she can cut out, carve out some time and participate in them as well. So they're seeing her in the video and even able to talk to her, which is really, really great testimonial. And then to the right there, this is one of our dice booths. So uh, this is using Brazen. If anybody hasn't used Brazen before, it's an opportunity to have a booth at an event that showcases your company information and then the opportunity to chat with candidates within it. And the big thing about that is candidates can come in beforehand and read about you and learn about you prior to the event. So we try to just add as much information as we can into that, that booth. So we add our company information. We add links to our websites and our hot jobs our inclusion and diversity um, links and, and information for that. We just try to highlight as much content as we can so candidates can really learn about who we are. And especially if we don't get a chance to talk to them, they can get those key takeaways while, while looking at our booth. So overall, this is just an added layer of brand awareness and we can share content now in a different way rather than the traditional marketing venues we've been accustomed to with in-person events. Awesome, thank you, Lindsay, those are great points. So let's move on to our second lesson. If your company is committed to DEI, virtual career events offer a great opportunity to attract a broad range of unique and diverse candidates. One way to do this is to participate in events focused on diversity, not just skill sets. When I first started here at DICE, historically, we would host events in specific regions or for specific skill sets. As we listened to the feedback from our customers, it was clear there's a critical need to host events that delivered a diverse pipeline of top technical talent, and we needed to do it globally. We now partner with employers who are committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion in the workplace to hold career events designed to help organizations connect with a broader pool of technologists and build a healthy pipeline of diverse candidates. So in 2020, we hosted our first Women in Tech virtual event, and it was a huge success. It was quickly the biggest event we ever hosted in the history of our career events business. Diversity focused events are now a staple in our career events strategy, and we offer many different public events to include veterans in tech, diversity in tech, and again, women in tech. If you're committed to building diverse teams, you need to share that commitment through posted content as part of your employment branding. Lastly, it's important to align with technologists on your company's values and purpose as an organization. We've seen from our experience that this is almost, if not more important than the work that is actually being done by your organization. 
According to DICE's 2021 Equality in Tech report, an employer's reputation regarding DEI is very important to deciding whether or not they would consider working with your organization. So Kristen, let's turn to you now. How has Optum been able to build a diverse pipeline with virtual events? Yeah, absolutely. This is this is such a, a relevant and important topic, especially right now um, that I know many companies are going through. And, and what you'll see here in front of you is uh, a highlight of some of the source channels that we have incorporated into our IND practices. Um, it's, it's truly ingrained in how we operate as a talent acquisition organization. And what's exciting is that we've actually been able to tap into and leverage virtual career events um, that actually touch on each of these buckets and really layer in. Through virtual events, we've been able to reach broader ranges of audiences. We've been able to expand into geography areas, um, interact with our partner associations and organizations to make sure that we're really creating a presence and making our jobs available and accessible to all the populations and especially areas that might be underrepresented. So it's, it's truly been able to double down and layer on top of our current strategies and has aligned really well with what we're already committed to from an inclusion and diversity strategy um, and has been something that we will absolutely continue to incorporate into our IND efforts as we go forward. Thanks, Kristen. That's great information. It's no wonder your company is doing so well with your DEI initiatives. As we mentioned earlier, the capabilities of virtual career event platforms have improved significantly over the years and they're getting better every day. It's important to make sure that you utilize all the technology available to ensure you have a successful event. You can start by maximizing your candidate outreach and engagement. So once you sign up for a virtual event, you'll have immediate access to the candidates who have registered. Proactively reach out to those candidates early and often. This will allow you to maintain a competitive position and capture the attention of attendees quickly prior to an event. It's also important that you prepare your team ahead of time to ensure a successful event. When it comes to a positive outcomes, you absolutely get out what you put into it. Set expectations and prepare your internal team for the event prior to the day of the event for best results. I know Lindsay at Optin does a great job of this and she'll share with us shortly some of her best practices. Lastly, be engaged by connecting during the event through text, audio, and video. Take advantage of connecting face-to-face -face over the features offered in the platform. This is a great opportunity to set yourself apart from your competition, which is really important now in such a tight labor market. So Lindsay, what are some of the unique things that Optum is doing to leverage technology offered in virtual events? A lot of those things, not all. Um, all those things you talked about, we've um, we've done ourselves, and we've participated. When we participate in virtual events, we're big advocates of taking advantage of the capabilities. And you're right; they aren't what they used to be. They are evolving, and they're evolving with better capabilities. And so, we really want to call out two specific things that we've taken advantage of while to take advantage of those capabilities. So, the first thing absolutely need to set our team up for success. Um, and we do that, we've participated in multiple DICE events this year, so we've created an informational guide to support our representatives. It gives information about Brazen and snapshots that they can utilize uh, beforehand and during the event. It gives best practices and canned questions, um, links that they can provide, so it's just a tool for them to use during the event to keep our messaging consistent. And then we also do an FAQ as well. So a lot of times our candidates are might be asking the same question over and over again. So we just give our, can, our representatives answers to some of those questions so they can, again, consistently relay that information for our candidates. Um, and then finally, we when I when it's the day of the event, I create a Teams chat where I will put in the link for the platform so they can easily access it. And they can reach out to me if they have technical issues so I can reach out to the organization. And then the best part of all of all is that the, re the representatives can chat amongst themselves. If they're talking to a candidate and they don't have the full scope of information, they can say, hey, you know, I have a candidate asking about this, and then they can support each other there as well. Um, and then, of course, during the event, taking advantage of these capabilities, uh, doing the video when you can, we encourage our representatives to use video. It relays that message a lot better and then what can get misconstrued on chat. And it also it kind of humanizes the experience as, as well. Um, but when you can chat or video, excuse me, 
sometimes the, the candidates may not be ready to, chat is an, a great alternative where you can have multiple conversations as once at once. And that's not something we could have done back in an in-person event with one, one representative talking to multiple people, having individual conversations, learning about that candidate at the same exact time. Um, so we really encourage them to do that. And being proactive, as you were saying, John, being proactive rather than reactive and reaching out to candidates prior to the event, um, scheduling chats with them when you can, connecting with them is just is just a better way to make um, a better experience in that virtual event. So there's just so many things out there, but these are really two of the main takeaways that we've been leaning into with virtual events. Thanks, Lindsay, that's really helpful. All right, so lesson four, attracting the right candidates. So attracting the right candidates is always the toughest part of any event. And it's critical that you have a solid promotional strategy to target the quality as well as the quality quantity of potential applicants. You can do this by creating multi-channel promotional strategies, utilizing all the assets you have available to you and not relying on just one mode of communication. Promote your specific jobs and desired skill sets. It's really important to make sure that potential candidates know what you're looking for so that they can apply to the right positions and spend their time wisely as well. Also, leverage your own platforms to promote the event to include social media. So as an example, when we first hosted our, our Women in Tech event, we wanted to think outside the box and, in, and we included campaigns with paid influencers on social media, which ended up driving tremendous results. If you have your own candidate followings, make sure you're promoting the events on your own platforms as well. Kristen, do you mind sharing some ways that Optum is promoting your virtual events? Yeah, absolutely. You you hit you hit it on the head actually with the multi-channel approach. That's something that we've absolutely been taking advantage of as well um, and found to be really successful. So with the agility of a virtual environment and a virtual event, it's allowed us to pull multiple levers for our advertising and outreach efforts, um, whether it's email campaigns, text campaigns, um, social media and social promotions, as well as even internal promotion of events that we attend and or even host on our own um, to really make sure that we're targeting the right geography, we're targeting the right skill sets, um, inclusive of um, any diversity and inclusion associations and partnerships. So we can be extremely intentional, intentional about who we're inviting, where we're meeting them, how we're meeting them, and really doing right by our candidates at the same time because it's making it that much more accessible and easy for them as well. So you'll see on the left side of the screen just some of the ways that we've been able to promote for our events internally and externally. Again, really leaning into multi-channel approach. Um, and then one other fun thing that has helped us even at a virtual event and within a virtual event environment, if you happen to be in a virtual event with other companies, um, some fun things to do is be able to promote your booth in a different way. Um, so continue to advertise and, and promote um, what you might be offering, including even a giveaway. So those are some fun tips and things that we've been able to incorporate into helping us attract the talent that we really want to interact with and, and bring in for the opportunities that we have open. Awesome. Thank you, Kristen. Those are great examples. So now for our final lesson. Um, once you've executed a successful event, following through with the candidates is going to be critical to maximize your success. We're in a place now where there's so much more demand than supply. And you that quickly if you're going to convert these applicants to hires. Our most successful clients will fast track top candidates and move them to the next stage of the interview process during an event. We've seen really positive results from our events with 84% of candidates moving on to the next stage of the hiring process. For candidates that are more passive or not a great fit for an immediate opening, it's important to cultivate relationships through pipeline building to keep engaged with top talent. Internal follow-up is also critical to ensuring successful events for the future. You can do this by creating a feedback loop and share your experiences with your team and your career events partner, like DICE. This is where we learn a lot from our clients and candidates through post-event calls and surveys. We've gained a tremendous insights from these feedback loops, and we're always evolving based on the feedback that we get from our clients. Lastly, if you love data, there's a tremendous amount of post-event analytics available to determine what went well and identify areas of 
of opportunity for improving future events. This is where you can really evaluate and share the ROI to key internal stakeholders and hiring managers. This will also help you prepare for future events and give you the ability to justify other events if it makes sense. Lindsay, can you share with us some ways that Optum is following up after virtual events? Yeah, of course. So at Optum, we're implementing a lot of those things that you're saying, and they really provide so much data. That's the best part about these virtual events is, is the analytics and the data afterwards that we can share with our stakeholders. So here's just our overall strategy of our post-event data sharing and our follow-through. So over on the left, you can see, you know, how it's an example of how we share our information with our stakeholders. We meet our goals. How many will be maybe turning into interviews or perhaps I mean, maybe warm candidates that we want to keep in touch with and maybe eventually lead into an interview and potential hire for our future openings. Um, so we share all that with our stakeholders who then can disperse it out as well and share it amongst their teams. So we're really getting the word out about these events across the board so we can continue to receive the support to participate in future virtual events. Um, and then below, you can see there's just a quick snapshot that's from our CRM. So we can see who's attended event perhaps versus who has not. And that gives us um, an opportunity to figure out how we want to reach out to those candidates. So on the side, it says, thank you from Optum. We know we've had a chance to talk to them so we can tailor that messaging to them. Whereas those maybe we didn't get a chance to talk to. And so we just say, sorry, we missed you. And then hopefully we can continue the conversation there. And we've, we have found successes holding recap calls. It's where we're listening to our representative who have participated and attended the event. And again, we're doing the feedback loop internally as well um, to learn what was, what was successful and how we can improve and also share any information we can back with um, organizations such as DICE. Um, and then from there, we can identify our ROI. So we're using that CRM and um, how we're input, inputting those candidates in there to see the, the, how, where they've gone throughout the recruitment process. So again, these virtual events are providing us with the tools to share all of our post-event analytics across the board and can continue to showcase how they're supporting our brand awareness and of course supporting our talent acquisition team. Awesome, thank you, Lindsay. So we've, re we've reviewed a lot of great information today, but the biggest takeaway I can suggest is to remember that you get out what you put into an event. You can't just show up at the time of the job fair and expect amazing results. The lessons that we reviewed today come from experiences that we've gained from hosting over 100 virtual career events globally over the last year and a half. We've had over 22,000 candidates register for our events in that time and have worked with over 200 clients ranging from small companies to the Fortune 100. We offer both public and private virtual events and we have an updated calendar of our future events on our website. We also have a dedicated events team that is very hands-on and will provide the best customer service in the industry to make sure you and your team are successful. Great, thank you to John, Lindsay, and Kristen for sharing so much great information today. Um, I'd like to go ahead and open it up for questions now. So if you haven't already done so, um, please submit them in the control panel. We have had a few already coming in, so we can go ahead and get started with those, but um, please continue to submit them as we answer um, these first few. So Kristen, I have a question teed up for you here. So um, someone is interested to know, if things are starting to open back up, why would I use a virtual event? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And um, I think it actually even stems back to what you shared at the very beginning about some of the industry insights and trends and candidate insights that we're getting that even though things are starting to open back up, we're never going to go 100% back to how things were. People are really adapting and evolving to embrace technology, to embrace virtual interactions. And so that is absolutely something that we're taking into consideration that our events model and our event strategy is never going to go 100% back to in-person. And it's probably not going to stay 100% virtual either. And really looking towards how are we adapting to meet again the candidates where they are and, and really include more of a hybrid approach to being able to do physical and virtual um, strategies in tandem. That's great. Thank you, Kristen. Yeah. Um, John, I have one for you here. So someone is asking, if I already use DICE for other services, why would I use a career event? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. 
Um, and there's a couple of different reasons why companies will use our career events services in addition to our, our core products. I think a few of them are, you know, the ability to increase the engagement and build tighter relationships with candidates and, and do it at scale. I think that that's one area um, that, you know, using the video and the chat can really help make a connection with a candidate more so than maybe a job posting or a reach out via email. Um, you know, another reason why they would use uh, the career events outside of the core products is that, you know, yes, we do use our own current assets to, to drive registrants for our events, but then we also find other candidates through other means outside of the, the DICE platform. And a lot of the, 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 the marketing that we do on social and, and other means um, really drive candidates that actually might not be in the DICE database already. So that's another reason. And then maybe the third reason would be, you know, if, if you're looking to fill positions right away, there's always going to be passive candidates um, that come to career events. But, you know, I do think that the folks that raise their hand and sign up and take the time to come to a virtual career event are, are definitely more active, um, you know, in their search for a job. So those are just a couple of the reasons that I've seeing that people use uh, our events in addition to the DICE products. Great, thank you, John. Um, so here's a question maybe all of you might wanna chime in on. Um, are there statistics on the effectiveness of the DICE program? Um, so example being number of applicants, response rates, resulting hires. So any insight any of you can share on that would be great. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to take a, an initial stab at it and then might have it handed over to Lindsay to add additional context. But um, I think event goals, if that question is kind of getting at that, are, are a little bit tricky um, in general because there's so many different benefits. There's there's that specific goal of how many attendees do we want? How many hires do we want from the event? Um, so we definitely are learning and, and working to establish benchmarks there, but there's really a lot of um, qualitative information and benefit like we talked about even earlier about the added brand awareness and the engagement and um, putting our information out there that you can't always measure with a hard goal. Um, so to be a vague answer, there's a little bit of qualitative and quantitative that we're always considering when we're evaluating the performance of an, of an event or an engagement. Lindsay, what would you add to that? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, exactly. I think from event to event, we don't know what we're what will be the ultimate uh, end result. But when we can see and we can take away the data from it, we can see again when we put our um, those attendees or candidates back into our database, and we can follow the roadmap of maybe what they've done. So maybe they we didn't connect with them at that event, but we've had an opportunity to reach out to them again. There's all these ways that we can kind of follow them through their pathway of maybe potentially being with Optum. So it may not be that one specific event, but it could be an overall strategy that has ultimately led to our, our relationship with that candidate. Mm -hmm. I, I think, Melissa, from, from our point of view, um, we're always focused on both quality and quantity when it comes to our events. Um, and I would say probably, you know, uh, both are <laughs> both are very important. Um, you know, and so the, the metrics that we can measure, a lot of times we don't have visibility once the event is over and the candidates are moving through the clients, say ATS. Um, so we don't always have great visibility into the higher rates, but you know, what we can measure is the, the number of registrants and the ratio of those registrants to attendees, which is significantly higher for us than the industry averages. And then the other quality metric that we talked about before was, the percentage of those candidates that reg that um, attend and how many of those get moved over to next stage um, interview process, which like we mentioned before is, is a really significant number. So, um, and that all can be tracked inside of Brazen or whatever platform you use, I'm sure. Um, so we have great visibility to that. So those are a couple of the metrics that we, you know, we look to, um, to track and, and continue to grow. Great, thanks, John, for that insight. This one is kind of um, related. So, Kristen, um, are you all seeing more candidates and more targeted candidates at the virtual events than you have seen at the in-person events? 
I would say yes, and and I, I will definitely have Lindsay speak to this as well. But I think when we looked at um, the virtual events that we've been able to participate in, like through Dice with Women in Technology, um, Diversity in Technology, um, and events that we've been able to host as well. Um, we absolutely have, I think, because it's enabled us to be that much more intentional about how we're attracting the candidates, who we're targeting, how we're engaging with them, being extremely crystal clear about what opportunities we're hiring for, that we have open. Um, so setting a lot more information and expectations out there for us to share with the candidates and the candidates to share and learn about us prior to an event, um, that we tend to not have as many question marks uh, than when you think of an in-person event where you don't know who that person is that's going to step up to your booth next and what what they're looking for what their skill set is um so the the span of control on that i think we've definitely seen um an increase in that candidate pool lindsay what else would you add to that i mean completely agree if you think about it back to the in-person events of the the candidate the attendees that are coming by your booth you will usually have pens at the table you've got these giveaways and they're not always ultimately interested in maybe what you have to offer. I mean, there's a percentage of them, but when you're at these virtual events, they're actively interested in attending and what you are offering. So either we're participating in events, so like these DICE events, again, those um, those candidates that we wouldn't maybe connect with on a job board, they're, they want to come to this event. They're taking time out of their day to come. So that just in turn, you know, creates a better experience for, for us and the candidates because we are both aligned for for what ultimately um, we want to, to get out of it. Yeah, those are great points. I would just maybe add that maybe because of the, the targeting now that's available and, and how granular we can get, um, you know, we're, we're definitely focused on specific types of individuals for these events and it's not a shotgun approach by any means. So um, that could be garnering better results too. And, and realistically, for us, success comes in the candidate experience and the client experience, and no one is more important than the other. And so we want candidates that are, you know, having the right job served up to them, right, at, at the right time. And then also with our clients, making sure that they're not weeding through multiple, you know, wrong candidates to get to the right one. So, um, and sometimes we partner with our sourcing services division which is basically an outsourced recruiting arm of DICE, whereas they can also you know, target, a team of recruiters can go out and target and, and maybe initially screen you know, candidates and drive them to our private events as well. So there's a lot of different ways that we do it, but I've definitely seen it, uh, the, the um, relative um, you know, specific industry experience is, is really tightened in now. Great, thanks, John. And maybe just as a follow-up um, to this conversation, someone is asking, are there demographics available on attendees at the events? Yeah, I mean, everything you need is uh, is available. So we could do years of experience, geography, colleges, like anything that you're looking for that's on a candidate's resume, we can pull those data points. And maybe if you wanna reach out to us, we could share with you some of the reports that we can pull as a, a post-event report. Great, thank you. Um, here's a good one. How, so Kristen and Lindsay, how do you close the gap between registrations and attendance at the events? Yeah, there's multiple different levers that are being pulled behind the scenes. Um, first, I would share definitely leaning into the capability of the platform. So for an example, Brazen will help support us with doing two communication pushes out and reminders, um, things like that to anyone that's registering. Um, and then we also do have a little bit more of our internal strategy that even Lindsay alluded to in how we're setting our team up for success by engaging with those candidates, reaching out to candidates, leveraging some of our own email outreach campaigns. So maybe Lindsay, if you wanna to speak to a little bit more of what else we're doing in addition to the event platform itself. Yeah, so we, I mean, we put it in our signature lines, we put it there, and then like with Brazen in itself is a way um, to, if we even go back to the last question, you can go in and look at those candidates that are going to be, they're registered, we don't know they're going to attend yet, but we can look through and actively reach out to them to say, looking forward to meeting with you, let's schedule a time to chat during the event, and you can filter them out based on those 
preferences on what you're looking for. So it's that's one really great thing about Brazen and other platforms as well. When you have those registrations, you can look through them and really encourage those attendees or candidates to come visit you and talk to you um, and really showcase what they're going to be getting out of it when they do attend that event. So I just think being as proactive as possible has been really key for us and in Luckily, with these virtual events, we have that. I think we have it much more than we could have in the in-person space. So um, those that schedule in the chat space there has just been so huge with us, for sure, trying to get those candidates to attend. Great, thank you. These are great questions, so keep them coming. <laughs> We've had a lot. Um, so Kristen and Lindsay, how do public sector organizations differentiate themselves? Oh, boy. Now, this is a this is a tough one. Yeah, I think a lot of it is going to be similar to even even private sector. I think a lot of it is how are you leveraging the tool to customize it, and I think that's one big advantage that we've been able to find from this environment is you can make it what you want. So you can you can highlight your differentiated information. So how you differentiate any any company or any sector is is going to be the same what's your evp what's your um, employer value proposition how are you showcasing that and honestly through a virtual environment we've been able to feature more information about us and i think any any organization in any industry any sector is going to be able to do the same because you can truly customize it and make it what you want yeah, I think that I would completely agree with what you had to say, Kristen. I mean, all about brand awareness, getting it, the information out there is just so important. And again, that that's the best part about it. Like we were saying, you can add as much information. A lot of times you can just put as much as you want in there and make it streamlined to what you want to share. So that's the biggest thing is just putting it out there, making it, um, making your brand stand out, but then also keeping it consistent as well. So just as much information that we can share you can share is is vital you know Melissa, i also think that from what i've seen and heard recently the more transparency you can share around your company's culture and values um regardless public private right and and what it's like to work there and what are the people really like and what's the leadership really like uh, the more you know transparency that you can create and really build that connection even down to meeting somebody from your team, right? And and that experience that they have with you as a recruiter, um, you know, that goes a long way. And I think that's some of the the, the things that separate, you know, a, a successful company from one that has mediocre results at an event. Great. Well, we are right about at time. Um, we've had a lot of great questions today. So if we didn't get to yours, um, as I mentioned earlier, we will be um, answering them on our Dice blog. So we'll send a link out with that um, to that in the follow-up email. But um, we just want to really thank all of you so much for taking time out of your day to join our webinar today. Um, if you'd like to see a list of events that we offer here at Dice throughout the year, you can check out our events calendar, which is dhicareerevents.com. Um, or if you have um, specific pricing questions, I know that was asked a couple of times or you want to see a demo, um, please email Andrew Hooper, who's on our career events team, um, and he'll walk you through all of that. Um, just as a reminder, we will send a link um, to the recording today as well. So thank you so much again for attending and uh, we hope everybody has a great day. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Lindsay. Thanks, Kristen. Thank you. Thanks for having us.